Here are the kinds of problems that we now want to look to solve in the homework. I've given four examples, which I'm going to do in a few minutes. The key point is, if you look at these four angles, none of them are special angles. In the previous video, we solved these kinds of problems, but they were special angles. And special angles, the instructions always say to give an exact answer, but not for these. For these, the instructions are going to be round the answer to two decimal places or something like that. Your answer is going to be a decimal. You're going to have to use your calculator. And then when you give your answer, you have to round it off. So it's actually very straightforward. Now, something very important, and oftentimes when students miss problems like this, it's because they weren't careful in using their calculators. So for these problems, you're going to have to use your calculator to determine the answer. So in this class, each of you will need a scientific calculator. And the calculators will need to have the trig functions. Now, let's talk about calculators for a minute. There are a thousand and one different kinds of calculators. And it really doesn't matter which kind of calculator you use, but the key is, whichever kind of calculator you use, you need to know and understand how to use that calculator. When you are taking your quizzes or your exams, you need to make sure you have a calculator you know how to use. Now here's one of the big keys and one of the most common mistakes students will make when they're working these problems. These should be very easy problems to get correct. When students miss it, here's the reason probably 90% of the time why they would miss something like this. And that's because you have to be careful is your angle in degrees or radians. So here's my calculator, a pretty old calculator. I like it, but it's definitely been around a while, not very fancy. Let me tell you the first thing we notice here are my trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent. I think most calculators are like this. It has the three main trig functions. It does not have secant, cosecant, or cotangent. Look at one of my problems I'm going to solve. The cosecant of 5 pi over 7. I cannot directly use my calculator to solve this problem. When we get to this problem, we will see how we solve it. But we have to go through a step first before I go use my calculator. But here's the really, really important thing about using your calculator. Before you ever start the problem, if you can see, maybe I'll try and make it, for me, uh, way up, I'll try and maybe refocus. Up in the top of my display window, it says DEG. That means this calculator, if I do any kind of trig function, it's expecting the angle to be entered in degrees. Now, if I have a problem where I'm going to enter my angle in radians, for me, my calculator has this key called DRG. And what I can do is I compress it, and you can see that it's going to toggle, and it's going to change, and you're going to see an RAD there. Hopefully you can see that. It switched to RAD. So now my calculator, if I use any of the trig function keys, it's expecting the angle to be entered in radians. So every calculator is different. What you need to do is to look at your calculator and understand how to go back and forth between degrees and radians. 
and be careful. Every time you use a calculator to determine a trig function, first thing you should always, always, always do is make sure you're in the right mode. We'll call it that. Are you in, do you need to be in the degree mode or in the radian mode? A lot of times students will solve a problem like 31, sine of 31 degrees, and they will forget to check their calculators in the radian mode. They take sine of 31 degrees, and what they're really taking is the sine of 31 radians. The answer will be wrong. So for these first two, I'm going to make sure So I switched it back, I'm in the degree mode. Now these become very easy problems. For my calculator, I enter 31, so that represents 31 degrees. I go find my sine key. I just press it. So look at this answer. 0 0.515038, a whole bunch of digits, a whole bunch of decimal places. Since instructions for me, I'm saying I was told to round to two decimal places. So I'm going to say 0. Point. So 5, 1 are my two decimal places. But hopefully you remember the rules about rounding. You always look to the third decimal. And you say if that third decimal is 5 or greater, it causes the second decimal place to bump up. If it's less than five, then it stays the same. Well, since this is five, it gets bumped up. Therefore, the answer to this should be the sine of 31 degrees is 0.52. Tangent 57 degrees, I check. I'm in degrees. Put in the degrees. Hit tangent. Once again, if I round to two decimal places, 1.53, should the three stay or should it bump up? Well, look at the next digits, it's nine. So the three gets bumped up to a four. And the answer is 1.54. Now we get to a couple problems where the angles and radians. First thing I need to do need to change my calculator so that now it's in the radian mode. Now the thing about pi, you know, pi is a number, 3.1415, and it goes on forever. I hope, and most of you should have somewhere on your calculator a pi key. Whenever you do a problem like this, you should not just enter 3.14. Oftentimes, that will give you the wrong answer because you're cutting off all the rest of the digits. In other words, let me just do it. So on mine, my inner pi, this is what pi is actually, 3.1592654. If you just enter 3.14, you're sort of chopping off the 159, all the rest of these digits. Yeah, some problems, it probably doesn't matter. But there will be some problems in this class where the precision is such that if you chop off all these numbers after the four, it actually will cause you to have an incorrect answer. It's going to be a little bit off, but when you enter it on the computer, it's going to say it's wrong. So the point is, whenever you have an angle and radians, Always use the pi key. So the cosine of pi over 5. I'm in radians. Pi divided by 5. So for me, I'm going to hit equals. So there is pi divided by 5. 0.6283, whatever. Once again, I'm not going to round this. I'm, I'm just going to leave it in my calculator. And then go press the cosine key. So once again... If I'm asked to round to two digits, 0 0.80, but I look to the next digit, it's a 9, which is going to cause that to bump up to 0 0.81. All right.
not too difficult. This next one's tricky. Now, let me just show you my previous notes of a video I just did a few minutes ago. Because we learned if I ever want to find the secant of something, especially if it's a special angle, I can go find the cosine of that same angle. So I, here I wanted to find the secant of 60 degrees. So I decided, let's go find the cosine of 60 degrees, which is 1 half. And then I realized I could flip this fraction to equal the secant of 60 degrees because the cosine and the secant are sort of partners. This works great if you're working with fractions. However, in this problem, since these are not special angles, I'm not really working with fractions. I do not have a cosecant key on my calculator, so how can I do this? Well, here's another principle of trig. So I know that cosecant and the sine are sort of these partners or they're sort of similar. They're actually called inverses of each other or sometimes we use the word reciprocal. Here's what I can do. To find the cosecant of five pi over seven, let me write it out, then we'll do it. Whenever I'm trying to find the cosecant of an angle, one of the things I can do, I can find the sine of that same angle and then stick it in the bottom of a fraction. So this is also the idea of being an inverse. This also works if I'm looking for the secant of an angle, since secant and cosine are sort of buddies. If I want to find the secant, what I could do, because usually it's easier and I have the ability to find the cosine of an angle, I find the cosine, but then I stick it in the bottom of a fraction. So for this problem, just to make it very clear, the cosecant of 5 pi over 7, I cannot on my calculator determine the cosecant of 5 pi over 7, but if I rewrite the cosecant to 1 over the sine of 5 pi over 7, I can use my calculator to determine the sine of 5 pi over 7. So that's what I have to do to solve this problem. I go to my calculator. So I take 5 times pi divided by 7 equals. Once again, just to say, I'm in radians mode. I didn't mention it, but i got to make sure my calculator is in the radian mode. So 5 pi divided by 7 equals this, 2.24399 whatever. Now I have a special key in my calculator which basically can take this and it can move it into the bottom of a fraction. Everybody's calculators are different. So I don't know how your calculator can do it, but the last step is now to take this number and to move it to the bottom of the fraction. And do not round this number off. If you have to actually retype this number in, make sure you type in like five or six decimal places. For me, I have this very nice key. It's labeled one over X, which basically means it's gonna take that and move it to the bottom of a fraction. So when I do that, then now this is actually my answer. If I round to two decimal places, 0.44 
point four four, the third digit's five, which is going to call this to bump up to zero point four five. So the cosine of, I mean, the cosecant of five pi over seven is zero point four five. Okay, so these are not going to be too difficult. So these are problems, non-special angles. You're going to use your calculator. Make sure your calculator is in the right mode, and then you should be good to go.